Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are stranded with a carnival just this side of the Iron Curtain. When out of nowhere, a fortune is within your grasp. Riding a number on a roulette wheel hundreds of feet high. What is your shoulder laughing at you? A killer clown from whom there is no escape. Listen now as Escape brings you David Friedkin and Morton Fine's story, Carnival in Vienna. <laughs> In the old days, the row of tenements used to be called the shutting off. Then there was a war, and it was called rubble. Then it was cleaned up, and it was just an empty space in the older part of Vienna. That's where the carnival set up. Pitch and wind stands, wheels, the midway act on the high wire for a valley, rides, palm readers, and the biggest Ferris wheel this side of the Rhine. Twenty carriages and a four-minute ride. And myself, front gate superintendent. John Ashcroft Allison. A nice sounding name. John Ashcroft Allison. The help calls me Hare, which is Mr. And that's the way it is. And there's Lily, who works a gaff whenever it's needed. She's got red hair. We get along fine. Mm. <laughs> oh, wait. Anna, is that better? Why do you think that? Every time you pass a shiny thing, a mirror, anything, you stop and talk and straight and slip back your hair. I want to look good for you. The next time? $10 American money. Maroon. The shirt? Pink. Silk. Cash me. Feel it. Mm-hmm. And also me. Liar. What do you mean? Liar, what? you are vain. You are proud and you have nothing to be proud of. You are hasty. You are a thief. You what are do you mean? Thief. thief. One who robs another. Tell okay. you what? You and me, the plans you have. Oh, baby, baby. One of these days, back to the never. States. Never. You'll never go to the States. You cannot, I know. Joey, tell you. Last night you were very dark, Johnny. And although I did not want to hear... Oh, I'll bet you didn't. Although I did not want to hear... Joey told me you were a soldier on a state post in Missouri. Where you were at a carnival as a man who... Who had handwriting characteristics like Zaza Garcia. Yeah, and once the guy wrote down his name for me to analyze, and I saved his signature and forged it for three months all over the place before they almost caught up with me. Yes. One day I would have told you. You didn't have to... I didn't do anything. Well, the count, and he told me. Oh, listen. And he we'll... told me how you fled from your country to yours, and how he met you, and how you've been traveling from carnival to carnival. Will you listen to me? Yes. Come on, let's walk. Listen, Lily. One of these days, I'm going to get my hands on enough dough. Look how you can. Not so? Stop a minute. What do you think? Shut up! A clown. Why don't you do something about that clown? <laughs> Why should I do something about him? I like him. Hans will is by the way he laughs. But a wooden clown. Tell him the same thing, Hans. A wooden clown. A mechanism. <laughs> Listen to him. Listen to Hans. <laughs> it's a purely mechanical laugh. Contrived to induce customers into my hall of mirrors. 
<laughs> Why does he upset you? The noise he makes. <laughs> with come on, Lily. I said, come on. But as is he here, I live, huh? As if he knows your name and laughs at you. And knows you stop and preen like a peacock and laughs at you. Just want to tell you something, Cousin. My advice. Change the record in that hunch. In that clown. Come on, Lily. Johnny. What? What do you want? As if he were upon your shoulder, laughing at you. Huh? Answer. Oh, it's not bad. It's... Laughing at you. Now, let's forget it, huh? Why, oh. the in heaven, come to me at the beer. I saw the car. You and me. I love you. I love you. What you perform? Come on. Professor. In a safe, he's a barber. Professor. Here. Let us stop him. What's the matter? Joey. Huh? Joey, they are the clouds. What is the matter? Yeah. You wait here. Why? Where are you going? You just wait. I see him. Without them, Sally, he'll get out of sight and mark him. Joey, huh? come on, let's take a walk. Take a walk. Take a walk. Take Back here, Joey. I got the trailer. What for? Back here. Hi, Joey. What's the matter with you? Been friends, haven't we? Bumped into each other in a Soho bar and buddies right off. You sure? Besides the fact you're a lush, you're a good boy. Good friend. Good shield for any carny in the world, right? Oh, right. I don't mind you took a drink and spilled a lily about me. One way or another, she had to find out. Well, then what's this all about? You, uh, heisted the wallet just now. Huh? I'm a guy. Tourist, right? Tourist, huh? He was with a blonde from Maxie's. He had to be a tourist. The way he was dressed. Green shorts with a feather in his hat. Give me the wallet, Joey. I'm taking no you wallet. You talk to me like that, Joey. You're close to dead. I'm telling you, I didn't hear <laughs> that. Come on. Johnny? Johnny? <laughs> now we'll take the wallet, huh, Joey? Uh, in here, Joey, inside your shirt? Oh, sure you have. Ah, oh, let's see. Uh-huh. Tourist, all right. Paul Mack, Boston Mass. Cards, cards. Where's the dough? Where's the dough, Joey? You already left the dough out of this? Oh, wait a minute. You know what, Joey? You'll never know. My pal, chum friend of mine. One day it'll all catch up to you. One day, Johnny, it's all gonna catch up to you. And when it does, when it does. I didn't look at him anymore. Not at Joey. At John Ashcroft Allison looking out at me from the aluminum side of the trailer. Hand on the knot of a ten dollar tie. And he winked back at me, and his lips shaped the words I was saying. $23,000. Letter of credit in Mr. Paul Mack's wallet, complete with identification card. So I looked around for the green short, the man with a feather in his hat, with a blonde from Mack. And the way it happened, I bumped into them coming out of the hall of mirrors. I trailed them over to the Ferris wheel, watched Mr. Mack slap down some change for a couple of tickets, waited until they get into a carriage on the wheel, Started up again. Then I walked over to Otto. The kid was operating. Now, oh, Alan. Ah, hello, Otto. Working hard? Not hard. Push this stick, the wheel stop. Pull it back, the wheel stop. Easy. Ah. Hey, uh, how about you and uh, Marlene? Marlene. I never got to see her. Although she works right over there, we only get the waves. Then, when we are both off, her boyfriend comes and takes her away. Why don't you go over and talk to her? Sure, go ahead. I'll take over the wheel. I would sit 
Excuse me, like to see Marlene Uh Go on, read it. Vegas, Ferris wheel this side of the river. Twenty carriages in a four-minute ride. Mr. Paul Mack from Boston, Mass, in the green one, with a blonde, enjoying to keep him in the carriage like get his twenty-three thousand dollars. That was the trick. A twenty-to-one shot. Scoop a handful of sand and gravel off the ground into the oil intake. Another handful. Another. Four minutes with 14 times around. Eight times and nothing happened. Nine. Ten. Eleven. The biggest wheel in the world. Trying to gap it to come up green with a couple of handfuls of sand. Now maybe it wouldn't work. Maybe I needed another gimmick. Maybe I... was green. And I knew there wasn't a chance of that wheel coming down for a long, long time. And there wasn't a ladder that high that could get them down. $23,000 on a 20 to 1 shot. I just hit. You are listening to Carnival in Vienna, tonight's presentation of Escape. Edgar Bergen fans will be doubly delighted with the new Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. Remember, Sunday nights on most of these stations, the new Edgar Bergen Show with Charlie McCarthy. And now back to Escape and the second act of Carnival in Vienna. And the big wheel not spinning anymore against the Vienna sky. And for a little while, the small riot of Carney wound down. New attraction added to early afternoon with the Danube flows. And how the kids took to it. Climbed the girders and hung from them like skinny rag dolls and kicked their feet into Otto's face who was going crazy trying to fix his Ferris wheel. And a small detail of Russian soldiers took to it, too. Grinning up at the merchandise display of black cotton stockings and bohemian petticoats. And at the very, very, very top, oh, very, the gent from Boston, Mass., with his arms wrapped around a blonde from everywhere. I told Otto to handle it the best way he could. I'd round up some refugees to give him a hand. And I walked away from it. Down the midway, past the gas bridge, past the shooting gallery, past him, past the clown. I can just think. Past where the carney started to die and got to be mud and litter and broken straw, where the trailers were. Mine, bright and shinier than the rest. Because there was a displaced straw line very handy with a dust cloth. We needed the work. And the job? Class in penmanship. Oh, gentle, the writing hand. Scroll, circle, and slam. And then, Johnny Allison into Paul Mack. Gent from Boston, Mass. Paul Mack. Paul Mack. What you doing, Johnny boy? Beat it. What you doing, Johnny boy? There's a bottle of schnapps over in the cupboard, Joey. 
drink yourself dead. Uh-uh, no. Uh-uh. Maybe you don't understand because you're fuzzed up. You're not wanted, Joey. Oh, now that hurts. Hurts when you say it to an old friend. But you could buy back my affection. I like you, Johnny. Honest. I don't want not to like you. Lush. Beat it, Lush. Don't talk like that, Johnny. You made a noise like $23,000 when I heard you laugh. I don't know the angle, but I want in. Half, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, peddle your dream to Madame Zaza. That's her pitch, not mine. What was you doing when I come in, Johnny? Writing a letter? Practicing, maybe? Getting old feeling the digits just so you can let me see, Johnny. Get your face away from it. <laughs> you didn't even let me see. But I got something I want you to see, Johnny. I brung it just to show you. Oh, <laughs> oh Joey, Joey. You really are fuzzed, aren't you? <laughs> uh-uh. No. All this your gun does, Johnny. All it does in the world is to make you and me buddies. I squeeze it on it just a little bit, and all it says... You hear it, Johnny? All it says is, buddy, buddy, buddy. Like it was a mama doll. You say half to me, Johnny. Say half of 23 grand, and I don't squeeze no more. <laughs> all right, give it to me, Joey. Give me the gun, and then you can go hit the schnapps bottle. Give me, Joey. You can squeeze the schnapps. You just sit right down on the floor, Johnny, so it'll go off right between your eyes. Give me, Joey. Or drop it. Or throw it away. I'll kill you. Sure. Help me, I'll kill you. Johnny boy. Johnny boy, now you didn't have to do that. Give me. Give me. Sure, sure. Here, here, take it. I was kidding. Nobody can play you for a sucker, Johnny boy. You help me up and I'll... Here, Johnny. Got to be a dreamer. This, just like this. He was as dead as I could make him. I picked him up, carried him to my car, propped his body in the front seat next to me. Whoever may have seen it figured the only thing to figure. Joey was stoned again. And Herr Johnny Allison was nursing him, like he'd done a thousand and two times. It took 15 minutes to drive out to the edge of the Russian zone, along it to a square block of rubble, behind it to an alley. I opened a bottle of schnapps I'd remembered to bring along, rinsed out my mouth with it, and poured the rest down Joey's throat. I slid the bottle into his coat pocket, eased him out of the car. What was in the alley was some garbage cans scraped clean, some bony dogs who just stared, and a no-name lush. In the trailer by half past one, I could forge the signature of Mr. Paul Mack with the pen between my teeth. Eight letters, straight up and down, with a couple of curls in between. By two, I was in the Vienna State National Bank on Hittelstrasse. Good afternoon, sir. What can we do for you this afternoon? You can do business with me this afternoon, my hair. Here, my letter of credit. My identification card. I'm Paul Mack of Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, of course. Well, my dear, let's get with it. Oh, of course, of course, Herr Mark. Something? Uh... Uh, nothing, nothing, but nothing. Everything is in proper order. Only, uh... Only what? Then you telephoned yesterday. You informed us you would not come here until 10 of tomorrow morning. Oh, you mean... Uh... When you telephoned yesterday, it was off noon. Surely you do remember. Oh, surely I do remember, my dear. Uh, something came up to change my plan, so I'm here now this afternoon. Does that make a difference? No, 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 surely no. Except only that it gives us short notice to gather the money. Five thousand Swiss dollars, was it not? Twenty-three. Thousand? Thousand, my dear. But the notation I have. Here, I show you. Here, that you telephoned yesterday, that you would come tomorrow, that it was five thousand. Oh, you goof. <laughs> Somebody made a mistake. Now, look, I've got a deal. I need every cent left of my letter of credit. Twenty-three thousand. Cash, dollar, Swiss, or American, make a choice. Of course, of course, Mr. Mack. Will you sign this paper for me so that I may compare signature? A formality only, isn't it? Oh, I, uh, I want to. The pen. Thank you. Hmm. Danke. 
And now, only moments longer. I, I must corroborate with Herr Schindler, the formality. Oh, sure. I'll wait. It is all as it should be, Mr. Mack. Your money's in this parcel. $23,000. Thank you, my name. Uh, an offer thing. Hmm? To sign this receipt. It, 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 oh, it... yeah, I know, I know. Thank yeah. you. You understand how much the necessity of caution. However, there's the thing, if you don't mind, of Look, course. I'm in a hurry. What's eating you? How does it feel? How does a man feel when he can step into a bank, ask for tens of thousands of dollars, and get it? <laughs> good. Feels good. Wonderful. Johnny, baby. Open up. Johnny, where have you been? Oh, come here. Oh, baby, baby. An hour, and I missed you. I'm a fool. Uh-huh. Oh, but Johnny, the excitement, the deal being stopped, and a man at the very top of it, screaming and screaming that he has been robbed. How is a man robbed to sleep from top of the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Lily. Yes. We're leaving. See ya? Yeah. What do you want, Lily? What are the dreams? Paris, Rome, London? Dream one over me, baby. Johnny Allison makes it come true. He's crazy, Johnny. Now grab a coat, Lily. From this minute, it's all you'll ever need. Where are we going? I told you, whatever ride you want. Whatever bobble to lay against your neck or your fingers or your toes... Is the money you have saved as front gate superintendent of a cheap side street carnival? With $23,000. What are you talking about? I hit. Like I always said I would. $23,000 worth. Now, come on. Cover it with a coat. Where we'll... did you get such money, Johnny? Oh, what difference? It's green. It makes a pretty sound when rubbed together. Make it whisper and it buys mink for you and silk for me. Like I saw once in a shop in Rome. That's it, baby. First stop Rome, so Johnny can look good, so Johnny can look swell, so Johnny can... You stole it, didn't you? I promoted it, baby. You stole it from the American who screamed from the top of the sand and screamed... Me, baby, me, Johnny Allison. Come on. Get out. Huh? Get out. I want no part of you. It's me you're talking to, Lily. The man with the promises, the man with the dreams. So don't Promise talk. me. Dream man, man of nothing. See. Who will go with you? Not Lily. Not I. You're lost in it, baby. Not with you, promise man, dream man, stupid man of angles and gimmicks and promoting. Is that because you hate the truth of yourself? Anything else you need to say? <laughs> you are not joy and lust. Drunk. Drunk with yourself. Drunk with your stupidity. Drunk with your drunkenness. Joey. 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 Johnny Ellison, who is Joey. 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 Shouldn't have called me that. Not Joey. You shouldn't. fingers to unclench and trail along the floor for the life to go out of her. And then get out. Walk. Don't run to the midway. 
crowd and the Ferris wheel moving now. Midway in the palace of fun, the back exit to the world, through the hall of mirrors, and I was on my way. Hansel the clown laughed, but this time I didn't care. Johnny Allison on his way with 23 grand to take him wherever he wanted to go. The hall of mirrors. I knew it like a book. Like I knew the back of... Back of my hand. Stop to turn the corner. Not this way. But sometimes a guy forgets. Palace of fun. Hall of mirrors. I had time to get in. I had fun trying to get out. Wherever I went, Johnny Allison came right back at me. Thousand Johnny Allison. Me trying to beat a ten cent dodge. Oh, easy to get out. Easy. If I didn't see myself, I wouldn't be there, would I? Well, would I? I couldn't get all of them. No, too many, too many. Johnny, that was, was me. He didn't look so good anymore. He didn't look like anybody I knew. Yeah. Like, like Joey, maybe. Like Joe. The way she said. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, there he is, there on the floor. To kill a girl, then to hide in the hall of mirrors. Such stupidity, this is perhaps not. For here a man can laugh at death. As Johnny laughs, they Johnny, and here a man can observe himself in a thousand mirrors. Hey, Johnny, from every angle, that is, if a man can stand looking at himself. Come, Johnny, come on. has brought you Carnival in Vienna, a story written and directed by David Friedkin and Morton Fine. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles, Lillian Bias, Jack Crucian, and Hans Conrad. Also heard were Barney Phillips, Robert Boone, and George Peroni. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leif Stevens. Next week. You are flying a plane high above the island of Matafuera, 300 miles off the coast of Chile. Beside you, a beautiful woman. And only she knows it's the last stop. The last time around, a death trap from which there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape brings you Tony Barrett's story, There Was a Crooked Man. listens most to the CBS Radio Network.